Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are all doing well. We have quite the fun one today, with this Beast Boy build leaning heavy into Faith and Arcane, using all the bestial incantations alongside the shape-shifting abilities to provide us with a very fun, thematic, and extremely powerful build. Let's check this out. So starting off with the main hand weapons that we're going to be using, we're going to be dual wielding the Beastman's Blood Curve Swords. Now you do receive these swords more towards the end of the game, so we'll talk about here in a second how to get you set up with your own set of curved swords in case you're more in the beginning stages of this game. But with these two curved swords, you're going to have that nice dual wield move set, being able to proc your blood loss super quickly. And speaking of blood loss, that's what we're going to be going for on both of these weapons, giving us a 114 and a 111, giving us an extremely high chance to set up that blood loss proc as you already know that's extremely powerful by itself now for these specific swords they're going to be scaling with b in strength d in dexterity and d in arcane and because we're allocating so many points into arcane it's going to be giving us a little bit of a passive benefit to be rocking these weapons in this build anyways now i'm sure there's some other weapons out there that'll scale way better with faith in arcane but these two weapons have been doing me justice and it fits this build thematically perfect as it's the beast boy build and we're carrying around the beastman's curve swords now the ashes of war that i chose on these weapons is first First off, on our main hand, we're going to be rocking the seppuku, increasing that chance of the blood loss buildup, and for that, the proc. And on the offhand weapon, we're going to be rocking Beast's Roar. And we're going to talk about the talismans later on in this video that'll bump the effectiveness of this specific Ash of War. So this will provide very nice range and decent damage as well. Now I want to talk a bit about how this build ended up playing out. I ended up using these Beast Curve Swords really as a backup, as I had a lot of fun being able to use all the bestial incantations and the dragon shapeshift abilities to really just have a good time throughout this Elden Ring playthrough. So 9 times out of 10, I would always start off with two seals in my hand and going back and forth between all of our different incantations that we have to offer in this build. And if the enemy didn't fall over by the time he gets to you, then you could whip out these beast swords and finish him up real quick. But I found it a very enjoyable way to play through this game, holding two sacred seals, which I've never done before, being able to play around with your spells and abilities, while still having an extremely lethal weapon sitting on the back burner just in case you're fighting something that's giving you a little bit more of a problem. Now, for those of you out there that are just looking for an easy to get early game set of curved swords, starting from the first step, you're going to circle all the way around, drop down south to the Bridge of Sacrifice. You're going to keep heading south, follow the road all the way across, and then head up top to the Church of Pilgrimage. Once you land here, grab your Sight of Grace and start farming the skeletons that are holding their curved swords. Not 100% sure on the drop rate, but it took me about 20 minutes to farm two of them, and I also recommend you use the Silver Pickled Foul Foot to temporarily boost item discovery. This will increase that process a little bit faster for you. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying these videos, feel free to hit the like button for me. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying these builds and maybe potentially trying them out for yourself. Thank you so much. So the two sacred seals that we're going to be rocking, number one is going to be the claw mark seal. This is going to be boosting all bestial incantations. So this is going to have wonderful benefit here in this build. It's going to have a B in strength and a B in faith, scaling very well with the attribute points that we allocated here. And for our offhand seal, we're going to be rocking the dragon communion seal as this one boosts any dragon communion incantations. Once again, giving us nice benefit due to the fact that we're going to be rocking a lot of the dragon incantations as well. Not only that, but this is perfect for our build, scaling with a B in faith and an S in arcane. And as we stated before, because I'm not setting this build up so much as melee, we're mainly going to be using those two weapons, not so much for the physical attack power, but more or less just to cause that blood loss build up and to gain those procs as quickly as possible. Next up, let's talk about the armor a bit, and I'm going strictly thematically speaking here in this build, so this is totally free range for you, but I'm rocking the black wolf mask for our chest piece we're going to be going with the raging wolf armor and to keep ourselves above that 50 poise we're going with the beast champions gauntlets as well as blides greaves honestly when it comes to armor my main focus is to keep myself above that 50 poise and other than that if you see something that looks good or fits this build thematically a bit better go for it and just a quick question to you guys what builds are you running right now what are you having the most fun with and i'd love it if you'd let me know any thematic build that you'd like to see put together and are you guys ready for this Elden Ring expansion because I'm super hyped to continue with plenty more builds to come. So if you're interested in any of that, leave it down in the comments. I'd love to talk about it. Moving on, let's talk about some of these incantations we're rocking in this build. First up, we have the Stone of Garank. This honestly surprised me with how much range this actually has. It also does pretty high damage and you can continuously spam this button and they come out relatively quick. So all in all, I was very happy when I started using this spell. If I have to talk about a downside, the tracking of it sucks. So if you're versing a fast moving enemy, this is going to be a little lackluster. But other than that, you'll be good to go. And I use this as my base ability. 
followed up by that we have Beast Claw. It's a decent AoE, doing a little bit less damage, and this is one that I definitely would consider swapping out for something else. I mainly went with this because it does fit the build thematically, does some decent AoE, and the only time I find this being viable is really when you hold the button down and you cause it to do its maximum damage. And this goes hand in hand with Garank's Beast Claw. Pretty much the same thing, if you've arsened a lot of enemies and they're starting to gang up on you, this is going to do a tiny bit of damage when you first cast a spell, and as it rips into the ground, it's going to send 360 streaks out from your character, hitting anything around you. Next up is going to be Aspect of the Crucible Tail. As we're getting into some of the shape-shifting abilities, this is a fantastic ability as it's another option of AoE. And not only that, but when you start off a fight hurling rocks, by the time he runs up on you, you can prep this ability as it has a little bit of a setup animation to get off. But if you can get that first tail off, it's going to give you hyper armor. This way, for the most part, you're pretty much guaranteed to get that second swipe. Next up, we're going to be going with Dragon Claw, and the same thing applies here. While you're throwing these rocks at the enemies, by the time they come at you, you're able to set this up as it has a little bit of a prep to cast, but once you get this off, you're going to be gaining hyper armor once again on that second strike. These are two very interesting spells that I wanted to use more often than not, and this build is definitely coming through for that. Next up, we're going to have Grail's Roar, and just like the Ash of War we spoke about in the beginning of this video, we're going to have a talisman that increases the damage of this roar. And believe it or not, I really didn't think I was going to use this too often until you find out that there's so many situational uses for this. If enemies are above you, if enemies are below you, you're able to use this ability and you don't even have to see the enemies and this will kill them. It has a large radius for what it does and as you play through the game, I guarantee you'll be surprised on where this thing comes into play. Next up, we're going to have Aguil's Flame and Ezekiel's Decay. You can't go wrong with a Flame Breath and Scarlet Rot is always something nice to any of the more hefty enemies. Last but not least, we're taking Golden Val. This is always a great staple ability to come along in any build. But a lot of these spells are interchangeable. If you're not feeling the two claw abilities, these are two that I would recommend swap out, but I don't see too much use out of them and they're fun to play with to make it an enjoyable experience. Up next, let's talk about some talismans. Starting off with the Green Turtle Talisman. Raising our stamina recovery speed, I noticed right off the bat with the amount of points we have allocated in this build, I was running out of stamina more often than I'd like. And I'll mention this again when we start talking about the character stats, but we're dealing with some heavy hitting, stamina sucking incantations in this build. Not only that, we're going to have our dual wield setup that's just sucking through all of our energy at all times. This, in my opinion, is a must have. Next up, we're going to have the Flox Canvas Talisman. This is greatly raising the potency of incantations. You can't beat that considering 100% of the spells we're using are incantations. Next up, we're going to be using the Roar Medallion. This is enhancing all roar and breath attacks. So not only is this going to be benefiting our fire breath ability, our rot breath ability, our grail's roar ability, this is also going to be benefiting the beast roar ash of war that we have set up on our offhand. So this does fill a nice niche in this build. Last but not least, we're going to be rocking the two finger heirloom, boosting our points in faith just a little bit more. Now, if anything, these last two slots here could definitely be flex spots as the amount of damage that this is increasing for your roar attacks is considerable. There are other options like the Kyrian Filigreed Crest, lowering the FP of all your skills, and that's always a winner. If you're getting into late content and you feel like you're getting beat up a bit, replacing that with the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, boosting your physical damage negation is definitely nothing to scoff at. And even the Winged Sword Insignia, raising your attack power with successive hits. As we're using these dual curve swords, this is going to start stacking this damage increase really quick. I just personally have them sitting on the back burner and like to use my incantations as often as possible. So definitely play around with these two talismans if you feel like it, because there's a lot of good stuff out there if you feel like you're having a hard time in a specific area of the game. For our wondrous physic, I just can't seem to get away from these two. I'm using the classic Magic Shrouded Crack tier alongside the Cerulean Hidden tier, boosting the damage of all of our incantations and eliminating all FP costs for quite some time after popping your potion. I would always recommend the Opaline Bubble tier, as this is going to save you from your first big hit. If you're thinking about leaning more towards May, Lay in this build, I would recommend the Thorny Crack tier, making consecutive attacks grow stronger. And something I actually didn't consider before until now, we also have the Faith Not Crystal tier, which I highly recommend, temporarily boosting your faith, aka all your incantations. 
So if you're looking for something to change and you're sick and tired of using the Cerulean Hidden tier and the Magic Cracked tier, a highlight to recommend is the Faith Not Crystal tier. Now let's take a peep on how I allocated all of these stat points. Our Vigor is going to be sitting at 60, Mind at 40, Endurance is 21, Strength 14, Dexterity 13, Intellect we don't need, Faith 75, Arcane 69, baby. So with Vigor, you already know no matter where you are in this game, pump that up until you feel comfortable. 60 is always a smart goal to aim for the reason why our mind is sitting at 40 is due to the fact that all of our incantations are big boy incantations the rock throw is 15 fp the tail is 20 fp dragon claws 24 fp grail's roar is 50 fp and the two dragon flame abilities can be channeled using up your entire bar so i do recommend you stack a good amount in mind especially with the playstyle i'm going with as i'm using these incantations as our main source of damage our endurance is sitting at 21. If anything, I would drop a few points somewhere and allocate more into endurance as I was really feeling starved when trying to continue our slew of attacks. And even though the green turtle talisman helps us fix that up a little bit, I would still recommend around 25. Now strength is at 14 and dexterity at 13 because I'm really trying to force myself to have both my seals out and really focus in on these incantations. I'm not really looking to bump up our physical damage at all. We're using these two curved swords for the move set that it has and the blood loss proc. Faith is sitting at 75. Keep in mind we have that talisman increasing our faith. So we're really probably sitting around 70, but this is giving us a huge bang for our our buck when using our spells and arcane sitting at 69 making it so that when and if we need to fall back to our weapons when using those weapons it's still going to chunk those enemies when that blood loss build up starts popping off but thank you guys so much for hanging out i had an absolute blast with this build it's a really fun way to go through elden ring with and i hope you do the same if you enjoyed this video hit the like button subscribe if you're interested in more builds like this coming out in the future and i'll see you guys in the next video take it easy